So, Michelle, we're um, S73. We're going to do a quick walkthrough of it. And, um, okay. Sure. Do you want me to share the screen or does everybody want to look on their own? Or? I'm okay looking on my own. Everybody I else, what do you want? Yeah, I'm good on my own. Okay. Screen. No screen share. I think. Okay. And it's 73. Right. Okay. All right. So, Michelle, if you want to. Sure. So, um, so this is an amendment to Title 28 in the parole chapter, interestingly, but it's pertaining to field supervision units. So for correction officers that are working in the field and the probation and parole offices out in the community. And you'll see in section one on page one, um, uh, it says that upon request of a correctional officer who's assigned to the field supervision unit, the commissioner of correction shall, shall, so I just want to note that it's not discretionary, shall authorize the officer to train and become certified uh, by the Vermont Criminal Justice Council in the use of firearms for defensive purposes, appropriate use of force, reporting and record keeping relating to firearms, as well as personal liability for actions and conduct related to firearms. Um, the commissioner and the executive director of the council are to develop the curriculum that's required uh, to comply with the subsection. And then once a correctional officer successfully completes the training requirements, then they're permitted to carry a firearm while on duty and to employ it in a defensive capacity. I wanted to show you um, or talk to you just for a moment about the existing law um, in section 551A um, so that you know how it works now, <clears throat> excuse me, is that currently, um, and I can email this to you if you're interested, under the subsection A and B in this section that we're amending, um, uh, there is <coughs> Uh, subsection B states that the commissioner can authorize, so it, it's discretionary, and designate any correctional officer um, to become certified by the council as a law enforcement officer. And then the commissioner and the executive director of the council established the, the curriculum for that particular training for that law enforcement officer. And then the commissioner by department policy can prescribe the use of those law enforcement powers um, and may direct that the correctional officer not carry any weapon while on duty. And so right now, um, there's, it's discretionary with the, with the corrections commissioner, um, and, but there is training required. So I just wanted to kind of mention yep. that. But they would have to be trained as a law enforcement officer. Fully, fully, <clears throat> excuse me, fully certified. Uh, I don't know spe uh, specifically, but um, I assume I don't know much about that because I don't work on the, you know, the training, the different training levels. But it does say to become certified by the council as a law enforcement officer. Okay, yeah, then it would be to chapter one fifty one. So I imagine they'll just fit within that existing statutory scheme. So it could, it could be a level two certified. Right. Yeah. Okay. And that's Anybody? it. It's pretty straightforward. Senator Collimore. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, I did sponsor this bill, but so you think I'd know all about it. But um, to be fair, uh, this is the same exact bill that I think has been introduced in the past two bienniums. Biennia. No, it is bienniums. I think for that. Um, <laughs> And it, it never went anywhere. But so I'm just curious, Michelle, current law seems to be a little bit more expansive. In other words, in order for this to be um, possible, the parole or, or probation officer would actually have to go through all of the stages to become a certified law enforcement. This seems to say that he wouldn't, he or she would not necessarily be a full law enforcement officer, but they would receive the same training with regard to firearms. Am I? Am I, I believe that's the case. I don't have a, any history on this one. I'm not, I'll be honest, not really sure how it wound up in my lap, 
this year, but so I don't have the history on it. And it and it did come from VSEA, you know, <clears throat> we want this. And so it, you know, I didn't oftentimes we learn a lot of the background and trying to craft the legislation, but I really just kind of made it work for formatting purposes. Um, so that's my understanding is right now the commissioner can basically send people through and to go through the training to be law enforcement officers. And as part of, of being a law enforcement officer, they can carry a weapon, but the commissioner has the discretion to say, I don't want you to carry a weapon. Whereas this is a little different and that it's just aimed at the firearms training. Um, it would still be the commissioner and the executive director coming up with what that training should look like. And then they'd be authorized to use or bas basically their firearm while they're on duty. Um, there isn't a provision in there the way the <clears throat> existing law that says that the commissioner can direct the law enforcement officer not to carry one. It's just a it's that the the that basically if they if they go through the training, um, the commissioner has to allow them to do that. Okay. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, I think that um, the and I don't think that currently they have to go through the whole sixteen week um, that they can be certified as level two, which is like a two week um, training, which includes firearms training. So they could, and it's. Uh, more discretionary for the commissioner. This this would say if if a probation or parole officer requests to be able to carry a gun, the commissioner has to have let them go to the training and has to give them the um, the right to carry a firearm on duty. So, uh, Senator Clarkson, it strikes me that this adds a level. With in an already toxic situation already, I, I, I think this just exacerbates our problems in prison. I just, I, I, I really am concerned about this bill. I, I don't, I'm very concerned about this bill. And I would like to hear from parole officers. I'd like to hear, uh, I'd like to hear from a whole range of people about this because it strikes me that this is just gonna elevate violence in our prisons. Well, this isn't in the prisons. This is probation and parole officers. They're oh, not in prison. Right. right. Sorry. Not in our correctional officers, but in already challenging, tense situations, I think it adds a level of, mm, I, I, I think it ratchets it up considerably. And I think there is a value in many ways for people going in unarmed and other people know they're unarmed and uh, I think that that heightens respect. I mean, we'd have to hear from parole officers, obviously. Or not. <laughs> um, well, we have, we have had this bill before us, as Senator Colomer said, at least three times. Yeah, I'm not a big fan of it. Sorry. I, it's okay. Yeah. Senator Colomer. Thank you, Madam Chair. Yeah, uh, Senator Clarkson, I totally understand your point um, of view and um, and appreciate it. Um, I think at the same time, the work that these folks do puts them in situations which are very dangerous at times. Mm -hmm. And by going in, in a sense, without any sort of ability to defend themselves, they really do put themselves in a, in a tough situation. So while I do understand and appreciate your view, I think that there is uh, some uh, merit to the discussion on the other side. I know when it was in Senate institutions, which is where it got referred to originally, by the way, um, Senator Terenzini testified. His father, Tom <coughs> Terenzini, who's also a member of the House, uh, was a parole officer for many, many years. And that family used to worry about him coming home at night because he would have to visit people that had just been released from prison and they were they were genuinely worried about his welfare when he did that. So um, he provided some testimony. I believe Vince Aluzzi also testified because in all transparency, I did introduce this on behalf of the VSEA uh, at their request. And, um, you know, they look out for their, their folks and uh, I believe he gave testimony too. So while I understand that this probably won't have enough support on this committee to advance. I thought it at least was worth uh, introducing it and 
I appreciate everybody's time. Yeah, and it is a it is a huge issue. My fear is that um, there are DCF workers who right. take children away from their families and go into bad situations also, and and it could just begin to escalate. So, anyway, Senator Polina, did you? No, I was going to say what you just said about the Department of Children and Families and people having to go out and check on families that are in remote places and. Because so this party, I think they started talking about this more after the death of Laura Sobel a couple of years ago. It got the VSCA thinking hard about trying to make sure their folks were protected. But I do mm -hmm. think it has the potential to spread out a lot further than this bill. And I think that would be a, something that would take a lot of discussion if we, before we move in that direction. <clears throat> well, we can look at it further. It's definitely not meeting crossover, so... We have some time. All right. Thank you, Michelle. All right. Yeah.